there, everyone. Welcome on into VG Emporium, video game music and more. I'm your host, Rage Cage, and I have with me another guest. And uh, this this here guest goes by the name Crazy Goji, and I'll let him uh, introduce himself and tell you know let him tell you about tell him about yourself, tell yourself about them. Oh, jeez. I. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm. Uh, I I talk. I have a voice. I uh, like video game music. I also make video game music, and I also make music that sounds like video game music, but it's not necessarily video game music. And my name's Crazy Goji. So Crazy Goji is a regular listener, and actually cons- is uh, like one of the regular spe- special orderers. So like whenever I do a special orders episode, he's usually in there yep. with something it's like just something weird and kind of crazy out there type stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Left field electronic. Uh, Hell yeah. Yeah. And uh, we actually, I'm gonna say like we uh, actually met through Signcraft, yeah, or at least kind of like yeah. officially met yeah. through that. Cause I, we ha- we have a split single through Signcraft. That's what it was. That was the uh, like that Christmas. The Christmas thing, which you've played. Yeah. I don't know if you've played your own, but you played mine. Yeah. Yeah, I think I did that. Um, and we both we were the only ones that did great. like you know Sega Genesis like you know kind of chip tune stuff. Whereas I was using Deflamask, yeah, was the tracker, all... and then he was using uh, Jenny, which is a VST enabled. Tune. Actually, back then, it, back then it was the uh, the one that was just called YM twenty six twelve. It was by the same guy. Oh, okay. It was yeah, by the, Super Joe Bob. Though. Yeah, the twenty twenty six twelve. The thirty two okay, bit one. Twenty six twelve VST. Yeah. I, I really like yeah. that one. It, it works in some ways better <laughs> than the uh, Jenny does, but yeah, I can't use it anymore. So yeah. Oh geez. Yeah, thirty-two. It's thirty-two bit. Yeah, and, and for some oh, reason man. I jaybridged it and it didn't work. Still. Oh man. I converted it. Ugh. And it, <laughs> it wouldn't work out. So you know, Jenny, um, Jenny, sad story. Jenny gets the job done though. But yeah. Um. What he? What we're doing here today? Um. The topic that Goji has brought on is techno. Techno. And uh, techno. So like you know, for some you know, you, I'm not I'm not quite sure. Um. Uh. I'm gonna be upfront here. We actually re- try to record. Uh, the day prior yeah, to this, we, but we had a little little bit of a glitch and lost some audio. Some technical difficulties. So this is round two. We're coming a little more better prepared. <laughs> yeah. But um, and I learned that I am not the best at trying to describe electronic music uh, genres because I just listen to it. I don't really haven't really dived deep into it. But um, yeah. So what he wants to bring in is techno. Some may call it EDM. Others are electronica. Yeah. You know, it's all different kind of variations of stuff, and you know, some like some say they're those are all different some say they're all the same i don't know yeah well there's a lot there's a lot of overlap and because you can you can do jungle in your techno and you can do techno and like a lot of people confuse it and stuff and like the rhythms can sometimes go like in like you'll hear like a dnb rhythm and like a techno song and it's still techno or something it's uh, it, there's not a lot of it's kind of hard to make sense of the whole thing but i i kind of worked it out in my own little way yeah, and I think I think we're focusing on like like '90s uh, techno electronic music when it was known as techno. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be talking about is VGM that it could be labeled as techno. So the track that we opened up with was uh, Simon 1994 RD from Contra Hardcore, which was originally uh, let's see, I believe this is a uh, Vampire Killer originally. Yes. Yeah, Vampire Killer uh, Don't originally know by who? composed by uh, Michiru Yamane. Whoa. And then arranged. By either Hiroshi Kobayashi, Akira Yamaoka, Hirofumi Tanaguchi, Akihata, or possibly even Michiru Yamane herself, because uh, she's also credited on this album yeah. or on this OST. Though you know, I couldn't quite find the breakdown of who specifically worked on what. So yeah. there you have it. So crazy Goji boy. Yeah. What can you um, like what? What is this track? Why? Why this one? Cause I f- I found it back in like 2019 when I decided to check the soundtrack out and I was just like looking up Genesis songs that I didn't know and uh, by that point I'd already been pretty. F- Cause in college I decided like oh I I'm gonna get into electronic music even more because I've always been into it but I-, I just I went like hardcore when I heard like Streets of Rage three. Oh damn. So like I just found this on. I don't know where, but I found it on YouTube, and so I would always drive around with it, and like, <laughs> like I would be driving in Chicago with just this blasting, having a really good time, just driving and like fist bumping and stuff. Nice, damn. Yeah, it was really to my taste. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's really, that's, it's really goofy. That's what I've been doing a lot, like driving around, listening to this stuff. But mostly back then, walking, 
around with like you know listening to the stuff through a uh, modizer so like listening to the raw vgm mm-hmm. files and all, like all that stuff but um yeah this track you know if as you most know like uh if anybody's played contra hardcore you know that the soundtrack in that is just bonkers intense just all over the place and uh this is probably a little bit like one of the more like uh, lighter ones i'd probably say um would you say this is kind of like a light gabber kind of sound this yeah this is this is pretty gabber which is interesting because gabber uh was pretty early uh early it was pretty early on in gabber's lifespan at this point and it i guess they made it to japan i mean uh um yeah it's but you can tell it's gabber because it's got like bow 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 like uh yeah that's kind of like that thing. constant kick going on in there yeah and that's that's still yeah, around like, today like that that kind of thing like people just take their kicks and like saturate the heck out of them and um, yeah they just sample them like that yeah i remember when i first discovered gabber like back in like 2005 ish or so and i was just like what the hell is this because you know i had started getting the drum and bass like the year before and started really yeah. diving into all these different things like you know finding out all these different genres like you know there's drum and bass jungle um intelligent drum and bass drill and bass jazz and bass clown step and then just out of nowhere i found this thing just labeled gabber and uh, it was just like insane like you know i was like what the hell like, you know my ears were just just like hurting but then like you know i really was listening to it and heard like all just the crazy breaks in there and that's what i was yeah. looking for it was like okay i'll take it i'll handle it yeah i actually don't listen to gabber much like the only gabber track i know is like a machine girl song which is like a remix of this Japanese uh, pop singer, <laughs> and it's like a Gabber Trap remix. It's pretty well known, but okay. uh, it's it's essential. It's Gabber though, but it's like it's with an a, uh, an eight oh eight, but it's not traditional Gabber. It's really nice. <laughs> okay, nice. I'll have to check that out. So now, speaking of uh, drum and bass, though, uh, we're gonna get into our next track here, and uh, this is a uh, this is a very su- um, kind of like pleasant surprise that I found while kind of searching for stuff for this episode. So what we're going to hear is uh, Yakonzna Devgon from Pro Proust, um, composed, unfor- uh, the composer is unfortunately unknown. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so that was Yokozuna Devgon from Pro Proust with an unknown composer. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is um, it's kind of like a jungle-ish drum and bass, really interesting track. And it's all FM. It's all like the YM, YM2151. No samples here. And yeah, it's like I was really excited to find this because, you know, I really enjoy it when I find like like drum and bass that is solely FM, especially coming from these sound chips instead of like, you know, something like, uh, you know, more advanced engines. And uh, yeah, this is a really cool track. And the entire OST is really interesting, too. Yeah, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this. Yeah, it has really interesting sound design. And I, and I like the approach of uh, taking a Yamaha sound chip and then just trying to do modern things with it. Like, uh, or things that you'd hear normal synths just doing, doing it with that. Yeah, I want to say this game, uh, let's see, I was looking at it, and this game came out in, like, 1995, I want to say. So it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if it was, like, a professional release or, like, an indie release, but it was on the Sharp X68K Japanese home computers. And uh, that had a pretty pretty strong scene of, like, you know, kind of, like, dojin games being made. Not as big as, like, the PC-98, but still fairly... Like a fairly sizable one, and they were doing some pretty cool stuff with that, you know, with the uh, sound chip towards the end of that computer's life. Yeah, yeah, it's usually towards the end that they uh, everyone gets really used to it. Their little sound chips. Oh yeah, and uh, I know, I'm kind of really liking the way how it starts out. It's almost like a airy ambient track, and then it hits you hard with that bass and the kicks, and then it brings in those little like kind of dropping basses in there, like little stabs of like gonky little uh, FM blobs, and. Uh, oh, yeah. It really it sounds pretty ahead of its time. Like oh, it, nice. it would they would still sound pretty oh, good man. today. So I feel to like extent. I don't really know much yeah. to say because, like I said, the no unknown yeah. composer. Um, yeah, this company that made this game, um, they uh, made a couple other games. Or let's see, or they uh, published a couple other games. SoftBank. So there's uh, like the Scion series, which all have really good music, and then there is also the developer China Cyber. And so far, I'm only seeing this one game, so it's just kind of like that there you go that's all i got on that for you but um definitely give this uh ost a listen because like you can find it on vgm rips pro proust pr p-r-o-t-e p-r-u-s-t-e and uh yeah it's just a really really interesting yeah. but now i think it's uh we're gonna get into your next track here yeah and it's uh search man forest stage from Mega Man 8 on playstation 1 by uh shusaku uh son <laughs> we'll find out later That was Search Man or Forest Stage from Mega Man 8, composed by Shusaku Uchiyama. And Mega Man 8's soundtrack is, uh, you know, 
pretty good. I, I feel like it's yeah. kind of underrated by folks because yeah. it's not Mega Man 2 or Mega Man 3, which is kind of an unfair bias to, like, you know, put on something like this because, you know, it's doing its own thing. It's, like, in a new generation of stuff, and it's experimenting with what it, the sound, you know, sample capabilities of that console, so, yeah. Yeah, I th it's, my fav it's my personal favorite classic game, not counting, like, 3 or something. Uh, it's, yeah. I think the art direction is really good. I think the sprites are really good and I'm glad they use them again on the Super Nintendo. The music, I have the soundtrack on CD. I, and <laughs> I'm, I made a little, uh, a little, a little, uh, chart of all my favorite albums and this was in the top 10. Oh, dang. This was back like last year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's up there. I, it's you. really, it's, it's like optimal, happy, cute robot boy, Astro Boy, Mega Man kind of. It is kind of music. Yeah, it is. It's, it's. They were really going in a good direction. Yeah, and uh, definitely, as you can tell, it's definitely a light, lot, lot lighter compared to our last couple tracks. I like to think that this is kind of like a stoner kind of song. <laughs> <laughs> like it has, it gives me like stoner vibes, like happy, chill stoner vibes. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I've. It's so wonky, but like so pleasant. Yeah, I really love, I really love the, I actually like, because I've covered this song once, and I covered it another time on the little core DSN 12 thing for uh, Nintendo 3DS. I did like an early version of the cover, and then I did like a legit one. Which, uh, which actually, we were kind of talking about this during a, like, break, or uh, during that initial recording from the day previous, that you, uh, we're going to feature that, yeah. feature one of those versions at the end of this of the episode without mm -hmm. the uh it's like you're gonna take out the percussion track and it's just gonna be kind of like the, the beat yeah the, it'll just be the melodies and bass and uh chords and all that so if you ever wanted to hear that uh then there yeah. you go stick around to the end folks you won't want to miss it yeah so this here is like kind of like i don't know what what i would classify as far as like you know where it sits in like electronic music kind of maybe just electronica would be kind of a cool thing like progressive electronica yep Definitely, it's definitely progressive. It's uh, uh it's got it's housey because uh, it's got claps and uh, <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe even like it's get yeah, it's got claps and uh, it's got the claps. <laughs> it's got the claps. It's like it, just the way how the sine kind of like the sine wave is just kind of going on in there, like kind of the sine wave and stuff. It's just a naked sine wave. Like you don't have to do anything. Like maybe you have to do something with the decay or something. But you don't have to do anything to it. If you just have a synth with the sine wave, usually it'll work. Yeah. Sign's a sign, and that's what makes up that glorious FM sound. Because you put a all those together, you get some crazy stuff. Yep. Speaking of which, yep. we're, uh, sign we're, circus. we're going back into FM land here. Um, we're going to be... Yep. <laughs> I can't I can't, I can't. can't stay away from it. I, 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 I can't, we can't help it. So this is going to be stage six. Your native resident. Yes. So this is stage six yeah. from Illusion Blaze, composed by Seung Hwan Ro and Myung Jin Ahn.
was Stage 6 from Illusion Blaze, goes by Seong Hwan Ro and Myung Jin An. So this was made using the YM3812, which is the OPL2, I believe, which is nine channels of 2-up FM. So you were saying, like, you know, it's got a bunch of different voices going on in there. That's part of the reason, because it's got, well, uh, nine stuff. And I want to say it sounds like, though, it could be using percussion mode. So it might be, like, you know, the five or six channels of melodic stuff. And then three of the channels are used up for percussion sounds. But I need, I'll need to look back into the waveforms again. But um, really, just really gritty and grungy and kind of like a, almost kind of like a lighter Detroit, like, electro house sound, you know? Yeah, the Detroit techno. Yeah, it- I, I liken I liken the like any like arpeggiated uh, stuff twelve tone or not like arpeggiated synthesizers that that are all uh, stabby and stuff. I liken that to Detroit techno because yeah. like the first the first uh, the first uh, underground resistance EP. Which was like kind of like a, a super group collective of a bunch of second wave Detroit techno artists like Jeff Mills, Mad Mike Banks, and uh, and uh, Robert Hood, and uh, the first EP called the Sonic EP has kind of stuff like this. It's a little more atonal and aggressive. Yeah, because like from, from but, the stuff I've heard, you know, this is definitely a lot more uh, lighter, like you know, kind of like uh, upbeat, happier sounding. Whereas a lot of the like stuff like you know that Detroit scene I've heard is yeah. a lot more kind of like. Uh, darker in tone a little bit more kind of futuristic sounding it, yeah it can be like that darker I, you go yeah i was gonna say like the ones that i'm mostly familiar with is like you know the works of drexia and you know their other project yeah. japanese telecom i've recently kind of like really looked into it i found like a cool little mini documentary about the scene on youtube i'll have to oh. find it again and like send it to you because it was really interesting because i'm looking into like you know wanting to make some yeah. stuff like that in Sunvox for uh, weekly beats because it's really it's really interesting. Yeah, that'd like, be you know, really to figure cool. Figure out how to get like those like kind of the sounds like you know the bass sounds and like kind of the pads and going on. And I know it's mostly like you know some 80, 808 you know for percussion yeah. stuff. And it's kind a of a lot of it's eight oh eight, some of it's nine oh nine. Yeah, so I'm figuring that out. Yeah, it's really good stuff. It's um I know the jazzier stuff, but uh I've listened to a fair bit of like the mainline underground resistance albums and stuff. Drexia is really good. Yeah, like I said, uh, Japanese Telecom. Um, I was going to, back in, like, 2005, 2006, I found, like, when YouTube was really just starting to, like, you know, start up, because, like, YouTube started, like, in 2005 or so, um, somebody uploaded a video of uh, one of their songs called Japanese Animation from their title album, and uh, they were using, like, you know, scenes from Akira as, like, you know, for video on it, and it was just really caught my attention, and it got in my head, and it took me years to actually track down the, like, the name of the uh, actual album and who made it and actually find the soundtrack or the... uh, the album to listen to so yeah just kind of one of those fond memories of high school because uh you know i only have a few of those yeah i didn't know uh that uh donald was uh gerald was doing japanese telecom back in 2005 i thought that was kind of more recent but he's got loads of uh pseudonyms and stuff i think it's, it's probably around the time that uh his partner in drexia passed away probably after that so he started doing a bunch of stuff. He got yes, pretty uh, prolific. Definitely got to dive more into it. This sounds good. Yes, it does. It's and uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance, check out a lot of like the, uh, um, like the Korean like they done by like Korean composers and uh, game developers because they did a lot of stuff for like DOS and IBM PC uh, using, you know, this sound chip, the YM twenty eight or thirty eight twelve and the YM twenty two six two F, which is like the OPL three and. Yeah, the stuff they're doing with those sound with that sound chip is amazing. Like you know, it's as you can hearing right here. It's like all these like full sounds, only two operators. So like you know, yeah, definitely high, highly recommend checking that out. But I feel we got to get into your next track here. Okay. And uh, what <laughs> you're we excited get... about this one? I can tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Uh, it's character select from Cosmic Carnage on the Sega 32X by Hikoshi Hashimoto.
All right, so that was Character Select from Cosmic Carnage, composed by Hikoshi Hashimoto. And uh, this is a return because, uh, you know, if you recall, uh, I had St. John on where we talked about some really cool Sega Genesis tracks, and he featured something from Cosmic Carnage. And uh, actually, this is how this episode kind of got born yep. because you and him were going back and forth yep. in the VG Emporium Discord after that episode came out, just talking about, talking like, going... About off about like Genesis you know all these music. cool Sega Genesis tracks. Yeah. Yeah, you just kinda it just you just kinda popped it out like you know, hey, we should do an episode. And it was like, all right, let's go for it. Mm. And it was just really cool to see. Like it was yeah. like, one of the few times I've seen like, you know, people really like conversating in the VG Emporium Discord because unfortunately I'm not really all that, you know, as active on it as I should be. I'm right. kinda bad at that. But still it's really cool to see. And uh, you know, this track here, really cool. I mean you can't deny Hikoshi Hashimoto. It's it's always so good. Yeah, he's he he can do a lot of different styles. It sounds like I I don't really know. I'm not very familiar with him. I just found out about him through you <laughs> and Saint John. Yeah. But I uh, I think this is probably one of the only techno tracks on the 32X because a lot of the stuff I might be wrong about that. A lot of the stuff seemed to be really rock leaning and jazz leaning there's a few out there that are kind of interesting you get i gotta dive back into it like it was the 32x uses the same sound chip you know the ym2612 and the sn76489 the only difference is it has like a extra chip in there for um like extra pcm sample playback where uh this game does not use that this is all the ym2612 and sn the sn chip so time to, gotta dive in yeah find out yeah because because Knuckles Chaotix is all rocky and like Shadow Squadron is all jazzy and oh, man, like yeah that's all like R&B and like New Jack Swingy that Knuckles Chaotix y- yeah yeah stuff like that yeah yeah I gotcha but um a really interesting one though is uh if you ever get a chance to look it up is uh Colibri which was featured on an episode with the Gene Gene Dre band the last episode I did with him okay. and that is that's some interesting stuff. It's like, you know, if you're familiar with like uh, Echo the Dolphin, yeah. that's it's kind of along the same lines, just really atmospheric FM oh, that's weirdness. Cool. And uh, yeah. So it's it's a Western game too? Yeah, made by the same studio. Nova Trade, I believe it was. Oh. And uh, it's uh, in oh, the game, okay. that's gotta be you good. play as a hummingbird. <laughs> <laughs> just ima- imagine, imagine dolphin, uh, Echo the Dolphin, but hummingbird. But uh, yeah, this track here, um, yeah, it's kind of like an interesting... Like kind of one out of out of the OST because the rest of the OST is really like you know driving kind of really like you know high energy kind of you know standard BGM whereas this is like you know definitely uh, like you were saying kind of techno all along the lines of uh, I'm not quite sure how to place it like you know not quite house but not quite kind of like a ravey sound. It's it's I'd say it's more it's more sci-fi technological and like it's got uh, stabby chords that sound kind of high tech. Yeah, and like, and it's got it's got the kick drum and the hi hat elements, and it's yeah, and it's playing around with like synthesizers yeah. enough. I like to think that house is more like people just writing music, and then techno is kind of more of the synthesizer. Okay. Artistry kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, gotcha on that. <laughs> There's probably a lot of people that are disagree with that. Yeah, it's all. All different, you know. Like I said, somebody's dip, your definition of techno is totally different from somebody else's, and they may, you know, what they call it is totally different too. It's it's just all over the place, and that's the cool thing about electronic music. It just they can one title that you give something could be mean so many different things. But I have something here that is definitely heavily in one style of electronic music, and that would be acid. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, on the SNES, this is a this is a weird one. Um, this is in-game BGM4 from sh- the Shinri Game 2 Magical Trip, composed by Kenji Yamazaki. Get ready for a ride, folks.
right, folks. That was in-game BGM4 from the Shinri Game 2 Magical Trip, composed by Kenji Yamazaki. And yeah, that is uh, definitely some acid, yep. some elements of house, and a little touch of maybe big beat in there. But um, yeah, this is a this is a weird one. Yeah. The entire uh, soundtrack for this game is just weird. Like it's along the line along this line, more yeah. uh, kind of ambient atmospheric stuff, and really like actual full on gabber, just weirdo, fuck, just crazy stuff. But um, I, I th- there's an answer for that, and that's because um. If anybody's familiar with the uh, Mega Man 2 on the Game Boy, you know that that soundtrack is really weird. It's not quite arrangements of the music for Mega Man 2, but kind of is, but it's weird and wonky. And that's because it's done by Kenji Yamazaki. And so, you know, a little explanation as to why, you know, this is a little funky as well. But um, I'm, I'll let you, like, you know, what, what do you what'd you think of this? I dig it. I dig. <laughs> I, I really like when uh, people just use minor chords chromatically. And do that kind of thing, like the like the 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 ascending little thing. I really like, like yeah, I, I towards I, the I, end there. Whatever whatever genre that that would be, any genres that do that, I'm a fan. I don't, I, don't, I can't really like. Yeah. It's just so crazy and uh, like that bass sound, like the that really kind of like hyper filtered bass sound that you're hearing, kind of cycling through there. The interesting thing about that sound is mm-hmm. that um, it is just coming from one channel. Because like you know the uh, SPC 700 mm-hmm. is like eight channels of sample playback. That is just one channel. With uh, four samples just being cycled through back and forth to kind of like you know for the different filtered sounds because you know it doesn't actively filter because the uh, the filter is global for all the samples and everything. So if you were to affect the filter of the actual sound of the pro- of the uh, audio processor, it would change the sound for all the samples. So you have to uh, cycle through samples that are already pre-processed to do that. But uh, yeah, this is crazy. And then like all the percussion is like three or four channels alone and then you get all the different sounds going on with the other channels and it's just uh it was really interesting to watch the channels like breakdown of this track can you sample a a 303 on a snes is that possible yeah as long as you record the sample you know make the sample and then it's a certain file format which is called dot ber which is a bit rate reduced so it's like you know taking the waveform uh, cutting some of the, like some some of the sections out, but still like kind of keeping its thing and reducing it to like a smaller size so that it can be processed through. Because each dot SPC has to be kept at under 64 kilobytes, which is crazy. And you know I've um, Dami Fortune, he's done stuff like where he's uh, taken like made these crazy songs where it's like, how is he doing this? Like you know, and he's, and he's kept it at that 64 kilobyte dot SPC. Though uh, sometimes he does go over and has to export it as the ROM file, but still, it's just a whole nother level that I'm you know just starting to explore mm-hmm. and it was yeah like, yeah maddening yeah he's he's a he's good at what he does oh yeah okay. at some points like yeah. uh, i know you're a big fan of streets of rage 3 soundtrack yes and uh i would oh, like and you know i have some parts of this i would kind of liken to some of the stuff that's going on in there you know with uh, all the experimentation that uh, yeah Koshiro and um Motohiro are doing yeah uh something like crazy train has like that gargling oh, yeah. acid baseline uh like something in the stabby part like the <laughs> poets part two or something maybe uh, yeah that's one of the more melodic ones on that one so yeah and what was this 94 two um i want to say yeah i want to say this is also 94 maybe 93 uh, and uh just one last interesting tidbit about this game is that uh this is the only soundtrack in the game series because this is a series that is like this the rest of them are more just kind of like hokey standard snes music stuff uh yeah, this is just again Kenji Yamazaki <laughs> just coming in on a sequel, a number two, and dropping just a weirdo egg, and you're like, <laughs> "Take that, folks!" Yeah, he's just just casually being a synth wizard or something. Yeah, but um, we are we're um getting up on your last track here, and this is also coming from the SNES, but is a little more uh, a little more uh, <laughs> a little more listenable for folks, <laughs> right? So what do you got us here? This is a uh, battle against a machine from Earthbound by Keiichi Suzuki. Thank you. 
so that was Battle Against the Machine from Earthbound, composed by Keiji Suzuki. And yeah, that's that's some weirdo weirdo tech. Yeah, it's a uh, crazy weirdo techie ghost. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's ninety five, right? Is that Earthbound? Right. I know. I don't know. I, I I did not play this game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I unfortunately did not play this game. I don't have any. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can look it up real quick. Say, you know, it's kind of like you know. People yeah. Are like where? Where? But um. No, I haven't familiar with the music. Really familiar mm-hmm. with the music and actually all like the arrangements and stuff and uh, you know stuff like um, I I miss you Earthbound, which is a mm. like a project that came out like oh, 2011. Cool. I think uh, I want to say that was like Ooh, four, four that kind of nice. headed that back in the day and it had like you know some early early Toby Fox music in there and stuff and yeah. um, stuff like uh, Nell Word was working on <laughs> no you I mentioned love uh, Nell Mother Word. Four and he was working on some he was working on some music for that as well yep. and uh, yep. a lot of people have been working on music for I, that for the game. I'm friends with some dudes that are working on That's it. It's crazy. It's still as crazy as that. It's still still being couple, worked on too. Yeah. Y- yeah. <laughs> oh, they they gotta be really secretive about that with Nintendo. Oh man, but I I want to know where to place this one. It's kind of like like you said, all over the place. Uh, just like wacky techno. Uh, just, yeah, just just techno. Cause cause this is a cause I got into this as a kid before I watched the game being played or played the little bit I did for myself. And uh, yeah, you just I, I don't know. I've always known this as like a little techno thing because the because like the first uh, percussion element is that uh, kick drum just doing the four on the floor beat. But it, it is really weird though. It's really hard to classify it. Yeah, it's definitely just like uh, you know left field electronica is. Yeah, I would call it. You know, is what I only thing I could call it. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's cool that like some people. Some some people like the the most techno they know is from like video games. Yeah. Like retro video games like this. Like I I'm 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 kind of like one of those people in that uh one of my gateways into techno was nice. Streets of Rage three. Yeah. Uh, for me, it would be like uh, video game music remixes. Yeah. Because uh, like you know I discovered like you know all this weird stuff that I never heard before, and then that made me really start searching for stuff that was like that, and that made me go down a whole rabbit hole for, like, like a solid three years of just finding all these different genres and stuff. So, like I said, like, you know, intelligent from a base, stuff like Clown Step, Gabber. Yeah, I've never heard of um, Clown Step. Uh, acid, Acid, Rave, yeah. like, um, Big Beat. Yeah. Like, act- no, no, no. Oh, that, oh, God. I just had a, I just had a key memory unlocked from high school. Oh. Um, I was, uh, so it was after getting out of my last class, I think it was, like, like a shop class. And I was walking through the parking lot that was next to that, and I see this blank CD on the ground, and uh, or or it had like stuff written on it, but I couldn't, I don't remember what it was, what it said. But you know, I was like, oh hey, I'll try this, and I had gotten like a CD player just recently after that, before that, and I played it, and it was just like this crazy, just like electronic music. It was like big beat bass 305 mm. or something like that. I, it was just like uh, the first track was just got this guy saying big bass beat or big beat bass 305. 305 and it was just all these different like uh just electronica big beat just house kind of <laughs> great. tracks and it was like oh man sorry sorry it's just like i just i just i just uh, all of a sudden just like yeah I, just like <laughs> popped out in my head i was like oh holy crap i i forgot about this yeah that, that sounds like a good uh it sounds like a good find just totally random and it set me on uh on a path but yeah this this earthbound has a really hip soundtrack and it's very it's very, it's probably very important to electronic music because they have all the samples and they have uh, stuff like this and they have like, uh, they have an acid techno track in there too. Yeah. Like the Kraken battle. Or, or it, that, I, th- I think that's got like a random, uh, a random waveform on it or something. Yeah, I think, I know what you're talking about. It's kind of like, kind of like a descending kind of like. Yeah. Cycling, kind of like how that Shinri track did. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few of them in there like that. Yeah. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But dang. Yep. Here we go. Here we are. We did it. Yep. <laughs> Round All two. All the techno and video game music. Techno and video game music. And there's definitely a lot more out there. Um, somebody who could really, like, you know, really dig into yeah. this is Rob Nichols of Rhythm and Pixels because that was his jam. Like, he was all about that just like electronic music good kind of producing some of his own back and way back in the day too and uh yeah he like you know he could probably really yeah. like <laughs> really like you know tell us what's what yeah if he, if he were here right now he'd probably be able to tell <laughs> yeah, us what's what what's going on here because he's really into that but yeah, yeah no this was still like pretty fun yeah. to like you know kind of dive into yeah. this we're both trying to figure it out on our own 
But yeah, yeah, crazy Goji. Thank you for uh, you know bringing up this topic and coming in and sharing what you You're share what you know and share what you got. Thanks and, for uh, having me. Like, you know, would you like to tell the folks uh, you know where they could find you? Yep. You know what you're up. To. I do everything. My name is Tom. I do everything under the name of Crazy Goji on Bandcamp. I'm Thing Gojira on uh, SoundCloud. Uh, and I do have an old one that's called Crazy Goji, but that one's really, uh, <laughs> really early stuff. And uh, um, it's like a lot of it's piano and the uh, archival kind of. Yeah, it's it's mostly for archival purposes. Um, yeah, I'm working. Uh, I I've just put out an album on uh, Lilypad. Nice. Or E Pad. Illy Pad. Yeah, Illy Pad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's called Times New Romantic. So, uh, if, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> Which it it was kind of it was because I got in touch with a a Japanese artist that uh, I liked and had and kind of bumped into uh, a long time ago when I first started making music. So I, I talked to him again, and he did the cover <laughs> art. So I tried to make it. I mean, it, it is just kind of my kind of music. Uh, but I tried to make it sort of like Red Book Audio Fusion, Jazz Fusion, like <laughs> Japanese jazz fusion from the late 90s and early aughts. Okay. I tried to do it sort of something in the style of that. Nice. I'm a big fan of that stuff too. And I'm also working on a new one, which will be out at some point, and it's really spooky and aggressive and dissonant, and, and very it's very synth hellscape and it's very different. Okay. But you can hear some Dang. of that on my uh, current SoundCloud, the Thin Gojira one. Okay. And uh, you can check <laughs> that out if, if that sounds to be your kind of thing. It's kind of based on like noise rock and like metalcore and like some rock music and stuff, just with synthesizers. Okay. So. Hi there, AJ from the future again. Um, here to tell you that Crazy Goji wanted me to let you know that the album will be coming out somewhere at some time. He's currently, he was originally going to have it put out through No Sides, but uh, I guess that's not happening. But he's having help from the guy that runs No Sides to find out where to put it out. And so now I drop you back into the point where Crazy Goji is actually talking about the guy that runs No Sides because the stuff sounds like he's doing some pretty cool stuff. You can check out the guy who is uh, who runs the label, I think pretty much on his own. Uh, at Wombat Vengeance on Van on Bandcamp, and he makes music. He makes music music with like some play cart Atari kind of thing, where uh, I, I don't really know how it works, but he kind of described it. And I think he it's it's very it's very abrasive, and it's very good, and it's it's like uh, it's just rhythmic sound okay. noise stuff. <laughs> it's like IDM. IDMs. Good good junkies. Good. good gunkies. But then also, oh yeah, that just that just recalled. Yeah, um, dude. We are we both are actually on a compilation album that, sh- uh, as of this recording, it is out. But there's currently some technical difficulties with going on with some of the like the distributor stuff. But it's called. I've been kicked out of nicer places than this, yeah. and it is, and it is a collection uh, of places six than this. artists. So it's uh, headed by Haberchuk, who was a guest I had on here and regular listener, as well as uh, Dami Fortune. Crazy Goji, Ranger BTS, myself, and uh, Modal Module. And it's all FM, just mm. like kind of loungy, kind of think. It's like uh, the vibe yeah. is like going to like a sports club, but it's all just kind of yeah. like uh, really just, uh, I don't know how to, getting kicked out. Like, you know, you're like a punk that's just kind of hanging out at, like the, the, uh, at the sports club, <laughs> golf club, whatever. And it's just all yeah, sleazy, sport. cheesy, just yeah, jet, yeah. like funky, jazzy fun and time. Greasy. Just, yeah. It's all it's all good. It's um and like yeah, uh hope by probably by the time this episode is out, it you know, kink should be worked out and it should be fully distributed all over the place, like Bandcamp, YouTube, Spotify, what have you, and uh, you know, we'll um yeah, it's it's uh, it's a uh, I it's it was a fun time to work on like those tracks and hear everybody else's stuff because it just all fits together mm-hmm. oddly well. Yeah, it's good. I've I've listened to a bit of it and it's all good <laughs> stuff. It's a good cohesive concept album. <laughs> yes, that it is. Also my my friend did the art for it too. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, uh, JRL Johnston. He's he's a high school friend, so he's he's involved. I got him involved with it, and he uh, did the wonderful cover and art. It is, yeah, it's just ridiculous. And uh, first thing I saw when the on it was like yeah. thing of Travis touchdown from No More Heroes. Gosh. The way how he's just crouched down yeah. in his hair and everything. So it's just yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there we yeah. go. Definitely, like I said, 
you have you know where to check out Crazy Goji SoundCloud, Bandcamp, and you can also follow him. I believe on yes on Instagram as well. Um, I'm on, on I'm on I'm on Twitter. I'm on Blue Sky him. too as Crazy Goji dot B Sky dot Oh yes, social or whatever. However that works, I'm still figuring that one out. I, I keep forgetting I have it, and I need to try to use it more to. Act. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely cool. check his stuff out. It's really just really cool, interesting FM, good weirdness, goody stuff. And uh, again, thank you, Crazy Goji, for uh, yeah. coming into the shop yeah. and just bringing and bringing in some techno goodness. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, have you in again in the future. Uh, oh, like yeah, and uh, keep those special orders coming in. You got it, man. It's your shop. It's a good shop. Why? Thank you. I try my best with this place. And so I'd like to thank Crazy Goji again for coming in and, and dorking out on some Techno VGM. So it was a fun time, and I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'd like to thank you all again for coming into VGM Emporium as well. And hey, if this happens to be your first time in, welcome. And if you'd like to listen to more VG Emporium, there is 100 plus episodes. I mean, this one here is like 117, technically 120 because of a couple of non numbered episodes. But yeah, anyway, you can listen to VG Emporium at Spotify, Apple Podcast. YouTube, as well as a really cool site called Terra Player, which is a hub for all kinds of video game related podcasts, as well as a good number of VGM radio channels. And then if you want to, and then if you'd like to reach out, uh, you know, either, you know, give some feedback, make, make some uh, suggestions, or as you may have heard uh, us reference earlier, special orders, which is a song request, you can send them in to VGEmporium at gmail.com or check out the Discord, which should be linked in the show notes. And then you can follow VG Emporium at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then myself, Rage Cage, you can also follow on those same social medias as well as on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Oh, and YouTube as well. Uh, so you can find it Rage Cage, R A Y J K A Y J. So now, what can you look forward to here in the coming weeks at VG Emporium? Well, next week is going to be shop themes. Yes, I am about due to do another one because it's been about 15 episodes or so. And then the week after that, we're going to be looking at some very interesting failures with some surprisingly good music. Interpret that as you will. You won't know until two weeks. 